Vamos a continuar con este video. Tenemos nuevamente aquí a Mika, por supuesto, y a nuestra modelo, la cual abajo está el link para que si quieres ver su trabajo de cosplay. Ya vimos en las anteriores partes los diferentes trabajos. Mika simplemente ahorita puso un poquito de gloss en los labios, pero ahora nos va a enseñar a manejar dos diferentes looks para sus ojos. Así es que no te pierdas este video para que veas toda la serie. Por favor, Mika. Okay, so we're gonna start with the more dramatic side. I'm gonna show you um, how to create a cut crease and add a little glitter and different fun. Excellent. Things. Yeah, so the first thing I always do when I go for the more heavy looks is I brush the eyebrows up to see how much space I can work you with. You have. Exactly, course. because sometimes the eyebrows go down a little bit and this way you can see exactly what you're dealing with. Like this. She has very nice eyebrows, so I uh -huh. don't have a lot of work exactly. to do with them. Exactly. You, is possible to use uh, the uh, special gel for the eyebrows? Of course. Okay. So with the eyebrow forming gel, you can also keep them in place. Usually I do this later, but we can do it now as well. It este doesn't producto, really matter. Exactly. This product is excellent because it will be fijar la ceja. De repente tenemos algún pelito que se nos va por aquí por allá, este lo fija a la perfección. Yeah, so we can really brush them in place and they will hold Excellent. position. Like this. Great. Okay. So, we have different options to prime the eye for a heavy eye makeup look. Okay. We can use the eyeshadow primer, of course, mm -hmm. which will just give us a very nice even base. Doesn't add color, but will um, give our eyeshadows a little bit more luminosity and intensity also helps with creasing so this could be one choice okay another one if you want more durable waterproof intense looks you could use the cream liners also okay so these are our waterproof and smudge proof eyeliners we have them in different fun colors So if you want to go for a purple smoky eye, for example, mm -hmm. you can add these as your base layer, add your eyeshadows on top, and they will be more intense and also smudge and waterproof. Another thing you can do, of course, is have your concealers, like also dermacolor, your foundation a tiny little bit to make the eye tacky, uh -huh. or a little bit of super color if you want to go in with a color already. Great. So million different options again. Perfect. So since I'm going with a cut crease, which means I have to add a layer of cream or foundation or concealer later on anyway, I try to have the base layer as thin and smooth as possible. Okay. So just a tiny little bit of concealer or a tiny bit of um, super color would be enough. Okay. Not too much, just enough for it to be tacky. Okay. Bien, pues vemos las diferentes opciones y eso es bueno saberlo porque es importante, repitamos, dependiendo lo que vas a hacer, el producto que vas a generar para el look que lo vas a querer y pues esta es, este es la magia de tener el conocimiento de los diferentes tipos de productos. Aquí entra, entra Mika con un pincel lengua de gato, directamente a poner un poquito de este Supracolor que tiene cierto nivel de brillo, no solamente por el maquillaje que es en crema, sino porque su composición es justamente brillante. So if you have a very deep complexion, very dark skin, and you want your colors to pop still, you uh -huh. can also use a white foundation. Okay. For example, to you know even that out so that your colors actually show up. So only around the eye area, you could use derma color in a bright tone to give you a nice base to work on so the colors will show on deeper, darker skin tones, which usually it gets matted down. Okay. So this would be one option to start this. Vean qué cantidad de productos apenas pequeñísima y después ya usó la brocha para eh, mezclarlo, para difuminarlo, 
para hacer que básicamente quede apenas una base de ese tono. Y como ya nos comentaba, que sea un poquito más pegajoso para que justamente nos entren en las sombras. De okay. donde tengan, como quien dice, de donde agarrarse. And since we already powdered a foundation, but I might use glamour and glimmers and loose pigments, I will add a powder barrier underneath the eye uh -huh. so I can remove it later on and don't have to retouch too much. Okay. Bueno, el truco que posiblemente ya todos saben es el de poner el polvo abajo para que precisamente si alguna partícula se nos cae, la podamos retirar fácilmente. Esto es el, uno de los trucos preferidos. Obviamente también hay, eh, estamos teniendo en Creolang unos parches especiales que se ponen en esa área y que ya te deja precisamente el factor de poder Also, don't forget the top of the lip because glitters a lot of times collect here mm -hmm. and it's very hard to remove it. So. Sí, ahí estamos viendo cómo no solamente está metiendo en esta zona, sino lo está dejando ir incluso el polvo más abajo, incluso hasta los labios. ¿Para qué? Por si hay un accidente de que el glitter vaya más allá, porque saben que el glitter es sumamente escandaloso, pues de esta manera lo puede hacer. Another product you could use is lo que les mencionaba. So these are just reusable silicon pads that you could place underneath the eye to catch all of the glitters and all of exactly. the stuff that falls down. But with these, sometimes, if you have a little bit of oily skin, this it will still off. stick and remove uh -huh. a little bit of the foundation. So I would recommend this if you have not powdered your foundation yet, because then you can just blend it back in. But if you already have powder, use powder as your barrier. Okay. Fíjense, un excelente tip el que les acaba de dar. Básicamente, ya pusiste polvo, no uses este protector, usa polvo. No has puesto el polvo, úsalo perfecto, porque si se trae un poquito de maquillaje, puedes corregir fácilmente sin problema. All right. So, what I'm doing first is I create a crease line. Because later on, we're gonna cut the crease at some point I need something to give me contrast. Okay. So it's easier to, you know, do the crease first, intensify the color, and then cut it with concealer, beam, liner, for example, anything like that. So my colors will be purple and yellow, okay. golden, something like this, because I think it goes beautifully with her complexion and her eye color. Excellent. And I yes. love purple. Yes, of course. So first thing I do is I take a more neutral tone. This can be, for example, a tone out of this palette. Because these are all very neutral, very skin-like. Mm -hmm. So since I'm going with yellow and purple, I can take almond and a little bit of TV brown. If you're not sure which tone to use, you can use blush colors. So anything that would work for her as a blush could be your crease color as well. So some of these, fluffy brush. Bien, si, si no se dieron cuenta, oyeron un tac-tac, le quitó el exceso. <risa> Ese es un detalle importante, siempre requeremos quitar el exceso y fue justamente lo que hizo. Cargó y hoy escuchamos tac-tac, es porque ahí quitó el exceso del polvo. Vean cómo cada vez que toma, vuelve a hacer quitar el exceso. Y ya automáticamente vean qué bien. I'm just layering this into the crease to give a little bit of definition and to build up the intensity. Because remember, you want contrast in that uh -huh. area. So we need a little bit of a darker shadow. Also this way, by using soft colors, you can, you know, it's easier for you to see how far you can go. Because mm. this one is still blendable, still adjustable. You're not going in with black right away. So if you haven't worked with your model before, for me, this is a great way to see how far up I can blend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so continuously I will use smaller brushes to be more precise. I just used the big one to give her a little bit of a brow highlight right away. But I could also do this later, just, you know, just a matte color. Later on I might add shimmer, but to make the blending very nice and soft. And to get the most beautiful blending, take a very, very soft brush and 
no, at no time you will see me have a hard edge. Mm. I always instantly blend. Because if you have a hard edge, just paint something on and then you try to blend it in. It's more difficult. It's more difficult because sometimes the skin just exactly. sucks in the product and you have to work very hard to blend it. Then of course you create a lot of friction on a part of the face that is very sensitive so your client could tear up. See, see, see. And a lot of times this becomes patchy. Exactly. Es, this, uh, uh, es una excelente, excelente opción lo que estamos viendo porque justamente hace que, si se dan cuenta, con muy poco maquillaje, con muy poca sombra, inmediatamente ya le dio un color al párpado y como lo comenté ya, si lo haces desde un principio como pensando en difuminar con una brocha más grande, te permite no tener que estar pensando y que a veces nos pasa como maquillista de que marcaste mucho y dices ahora el, a difuminar. Esta es una manera de hacerlo muy fácil. Obviamente también eh, se van a dar cuenta, como lo mencionó, que cada vez va a ir usando brochas más definidas para terminar de dar el look exactamente en donde lo quiere dar. So I'm taking a brush with which I can work a little bit more precise. Mm -hmm. This looks big, but it's this flat. side is very flat, so yes. I can work this right into the crease. Es un lengua de gato, es pelo natural. Okay, look at me. Mm -hmm. All right. She almost naturally has a cut crease exactly. with, her, with the way her El eye otro is shaped. Es una brochita redonda pequeña. Este ya fue un lengua de gato. Okay, now I take my purple tones. Uh -huh. And I have to add a lot of color here mm -hmm. for the contrast again. So it doesn't matter if I go too far down because this will be covered anyway. Of course. So I can just, you know, start here and then work my way up. It's just important that the part that goes up is blended. The rest on the movable eyelid is not important right now. So you can use a bigger brush and you don't have to be too precise and, you know, mm -hmm. makes it much faster and much easier to work. Already creating the depth of the crease. Same here. A question, Mike. Yes. Usually, uh, I presume that when you work with the two eyes for the same look, mm -hmm. you work together, no? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't finish one eye and then go exactly. to the other because exactly. you might not remember which exact color you have and so on. Of course. So, I like to work. Si pregunté una cosa que puede considerarse muy obvia, pero prefería hacerlo. Aquí está haciendo este trabajo de esta forma porque recuerda que estamos pensando en hacer dos looks diferentes. Se hizo un look para cada uno de los lados de la cara y en este lado ya va a ser un trabajo diferente. Cuando trabajas al mismo tiempo, es decir, como siempre que es los dos lados iguales, tienes que ir empatando al mismo tiempo uno y otro porque de otra manera se vuelve muy complicado. Al rato ya no pones los colores en el mismo lugar. So in between, I always take my fluffy brush uh -huh. and blend the colors together. Nuevamente su brochita redonda para mezclar. Aquí es, digamos, como la brocha de polvos, pero hiper reducida para esa área. Y aquí ya va a meter, fíjense, el redondo, pero ya de pelo corto, que es un pelo más apretado, que da mayor firmeza y que precisamente le da una mayor precisión de dónde está colocando la sombra. So, this time I'm taking the more rounded brush. It's a mm -hmm. little bit harder to get the most out of my color. So, every time you press, you will have coverage. Every time you move the brush like this, okay. you will have a light wash and a blend. Okay. Bien, el tip del, del uso de ese pincel en particular. Si tú estás poniendo, estás empujando, estás haciendo el tip tip, estás dejando ahí. En cuanto haces esto, estás mezclando. Don't have to worry too much about this area because we will blend it anyway. Of also. 
just gonna add a little bit more of the pink here. And remember, cut crease doesn't work for every eye shape. So also cut crease is more like a Instagram photograph trend. Okay. You will always see the people looking down uh -huh. and stretching the eyelids so of it looks course. nice and beautiful. Of course. But with a lot of people, especially hooded eyes, it looks nice when you have your eyes closed. Yeah, Once you, you open, it. of course. <laughs> you cannot see the cut anymore. <laughs> so, sí, por supuesto. Depending what that you do, for what you do it. Exactly. Sí, sí, obviamente. Es, es muy lógico lo que acaba de decir. Y comparto right, su opinión. So already this looks pretty nice on her. Yes, yes. And also with her, with the eye open, you will not see the cut. Mm -hmm. You will only see it when she looks down because of she has course. a very distinct crease on her own. Mm -hmm. But still, you will get the different colors. So it's like a compromise. Mm -hmm. And also for you know, for the base colors like this, for the shading, use matte tones. Because okay. only matte tones will give you depth. Okay. Everything that is bright in color and shimmers, optically, comes forward. And everything that is dark and matte, optically, is retreat. Is down. Exactly. So Replace. if you want to create a shadow, something deep, something intense, matte colors, dark colors. Okay. Bien. Eso. Eh, si eres nuevo en el maquillaje te va a quedar mucho más claro en cuanto veas el video de las luces y las sombras donde voy a explicar a profundidad todo eso. Ok. So, now for the cut. Excellent. I have a very beautiful brush here. Let's take this one. It's still cleaner. Ok. These are actually, what's it, a YouTuber? Es un lengua de gato, pero sintético y extremadamente plano. Mm -hmm. So these are actually uh, more of the body paint brushes. Uh -huh. But with the shape, as you can see, mm -hmm. this is perfect to use as a stamp for my cut crease. Exactly. So I will use this and I will use Dermacolor, the light tone, D0. And I'm using Dermacolor because it contains the least amount of oils of, out of all of the creamy foundations. So it's less likely to move around. Okay. It has a lot of coverage, so with just a thin layer, I can cut the crease very nicely. Mm -hmm. And you can set it also, you can put a little bit of the setting powder, of the fixing powder, in between your loose pigments, for example. Okay. So if the consistency is too thick, add a tiny bit of makeup blend. I don't need it, it's warm enough. So I'm covering both sides of my brush. I actually need a little more product, so this time you really load your brush with color. And then you have to look at your model and see where to put the crease, Okay. the fake one. So I can just place my brush here when she, when she looks straight ahead, where her natural crease is, and now close. Boom. Okay, so this is pretty much Fíjense your guideline. Fue el truco, eh? Básicamente es donde ve la persona ahí, entonces cierra su ojo y ahí es donde encajas el producto. And then you can just use it like a stamp and drag it down. So this line naturally will be very sharply cut, uh -huh. very precise without you having to work much. Claro, con ese pincel prácticamente, ese lengua de gato, con esa anchura, entró justo ahí y dio el toque perfecto y ahora simplemente ya va a mezclar, va a difuminar. Yeah, the rest you just pat in to remove excess. The excess, okay. And to make a nice transition to the rest of the eye. Uh -huh. And if you have a smaller eye, you can also use smaller brushes like this, mm -hmm. where you can maybe reach a little better. So most of the time in the inner corner, this brush is a little too big. Uh -huh. So you can just take a smaller brush and just pat. For the detail. Exactly. Pat this on. If you want to be more precise, just take a little makeup blend because this will help you smooth everything out. Dip your brush in and refine the line.
and I just pat and drag a little bit. It doesn't help if you drag along because the skin is so thin that most of the time you move the skin with the brush. Uh -huh. So just pat. Si sí, eso es un detalle importantísimo lo que acaba de mencionar. Los párpados tienden a ser extremadamente suaves y obviamente entre la persona tiende a ser más madura, son todavía aún más suaves. Entonces, he ahí del por qué usar el Make Up Blend te permite que esto pues sea más suave la transición y puedas mezclar mucho mejor and y no tengas blend. ese problema. And this of course we have to set uh -huh. with powder. Okay. So, again, no abras tu ojo, mi amor, porque van a sellar apenas. You could choose just your matte tones. Uh -huh. You could also use shimmers. You can use, use loose pigments, glitters, anything. So I will use a little bit of everything, actually. <laughs> <laughs> obviamente, Mika, como buena maquillista y obviamente de Creolan, tiene absolutamente todo en su estuche. No lo trajo todo. Aquí nosotros básicamente le estamos proporcionando mucho, pero hay cosas que ella no... Deja porque sabe que son preferidas, como todo maquillista que tenemos cosas muy especiales que nos gusta usar. Y en este caso, bueno, hizo la mención desde el punto de vista de que ya puedes aquí entonces sellar. Ella va a usar no polvo, sino va a usar polvo desde el punto de vista traslúcido, sino la sombra ya directamente que desea usar es la que va a poner, la que va a sellar el dermacolor. Recuerda, crema tiene que ser sellada así. So we'll mix a little bit of living color pigment. Okay. Living color pigment, okay. And this is the color silk gold, and this okay. will give you a very beautiful reflection okay. and highlight. And with loose pigments, use a flat brush, just dip one side in, tap it to remove the excess. Because if you pat down and you have product here, this will fall down. Okay. So. Tip muy importante. Tómalo muy en cuenta porque eso es uno de los cocos de los maquillistas que de repente se les está poniendo todo aquí cargadísimo de producto. Y eso es por uno de los detalles, no seguir el punto de solamente cárgalo de un lado. So, right in the center, or right in the front, I have the living color pigment, uh -huh. which gives us a lot of reflection. Uh -huh. Now I'm dipping into my Viva Color Palette, which is this beautiful one here. It's beautiful, this one, yeah. yes. Also, this one is great if you want high shimmer mm -hmm. blush or something like And this. And it's possible to use it with water too. Exactly. So if you want more coverage, more intensity, just wet your brush and use it exactly. like this. Exactly. So I'm going to use the gold. This is the advantage of Viva, que es un producto verdaderamente extraordinario, porque es una mezcla en donde puedes usar directamente como polvos, como lo está haciendo aquí, pero cuando tú pones un poquito de agua, incrementas el, el tono y haces unos trabajos geniales rapidísimo. And also a little bit of the orange, which will warm everything up and will give me a very nice, warm transition. Excellent. All right, once you come to this part where you have to blend it in with the other colors, Um, I most of the time switch back to matte colors to make it work here. So you can use the same brush, still a little bit of shimmery product, so it will blend. But this edge right here should remain matte Perfect. because you do not want to lose the, you know, intensity, the shadow. Uh -huh. And importantly, the, the, uh, the is more deep this this size for the give the three D. Dimension. Exactly. Also, it's more. It's used most eye shapes to have the darkness in the in outer the corner, corner and light in the front because of this course. will make your eyes look bigger and also will you know help the shape of your face because the eyes are the main focus. If you have a highlight here, it will open up the eyes and will make you look more awake, more fresh. Yes. All of these. So. Aquí con esto estamos aprendiendo y recordando el punto de, de toda esa técnica que he estado dando muy al principio de los videos, en donde la luz, el color, etc. Donde empiezas a, a ver por qué son útiles, por qué es necesario. Es por estos puntos, porque tienes que comprender qué partes tienen que conservarse al fondo, cuáles resaltar, y todo eso es vital. Eh, 
es por eso que aunque parezca que cualquier persona puede ser maquillista, que sí lo puede ser, pero entre más conocimiento tenga del color, de las luces, de la pre misma perspectiva que a veces tienen los artistas plásticos, es muy aplicable en el maquillaje. So again, I'm switching for the blend, a little bit of shimmery color, then for the rest, again, dip into your matte colors and make it work together. So you have your cut here and it turns into a soft blend. And with that warmer pink tone, also from this palette, uh -huh. mix in with a matte color because again, I want the, you know, more deep tone. Just very gently I work that color into the crease and up. And here you can, depending on the eye shape, you can really mm -hmm. blend it out, make it round. Doesn't matter, that's like Pen preference. Limit. Of course. Yeah, also depends on the eye shape. Of course. So for her I'm going with the upwards version que es una de las más comunes, casi siempre nos gusta alargar esa parte para hacer como más almendrado toda esa zona del ojo. Ok, open your eyes. So as you can see here, our fake cut crease is pretty much also her natural crease. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for pictures, her natural eyelid will create a perfect cut crease anyway. Of course. But if she looks down and if you want to have that, you know, like a picture, You have the beautiful cut here. Sí, por supuesto, ese corte que está mencionando es para que la foto sea tomada desde arriba, se vea todo el trabajo que se hizo, porque este trabajo con el ojo abierto, pues no, tendría que ir ella con los ojos cerrados <risa> para que luciera ser hermosa y después puede pasar un accidente peor. <risa> okay, before I do liner and lashes and all of that, I'm gonna finish the under eye area okay and since this is a fun look I'm just gonna use a different color okay. and a different technique also so this time I'm choosing cream liners okay since cream liners are also safe to use inside of the waterline so okay. I can put blue yellow white black of course inside the waterline and change the look and make it a little bit more fun okay so again small brush fluffy one because I want to blend down I'm going to take this color, this blue one here, and mixing it a tiny little bit with the purple just to, you know, make it work. Mm -hmm. And look up. Then from the outer corner, I will pretty much use this like a, like my base. I will add eyeshadows on top as well. But this will give me a lot more intensity and if you have the problem that your under eye area creases or fades over time, the cream liner will help it stick. Mm -hmm. And of course you can also put your finger here, drag that line down and use this inside of the eye. This es is a technique very eh, gustada because precisamente el meter el maquillaje in esa zona del ojo in donde es la que ya podríamos considerar parte casi interna del ojo, eh, le da una profundidad y una dimensión y un look muy intenso justamente. Like this. Great. And then of course on top we add our shadows. I'm gonna do like a darker shadow in uh -huh. the other corner again, turning it into a lighter one. So same techniques as with any beauty makeup. Dark on the outside, bright on the inside. Of course. Be careful with blue, because blue is one of those colors that crumble a lot. Okay. That's just because of the pigment and doesn't want to stick within the okay. base. So every time you have blue, be careful. Detail, detail important. Just adding the vibrant blue tones in the outer corner. Then I'm changing to my shimmery tones. 
again from this palette. Uh huh. Is okay. Biba again? So it's ah. these two. Uh huh. To create more reflection in the center. Okay. And right in the front, I take the brightest color of blue and also again mix it with my living color that I have on the top as well. So again, it comes together. Like that. So now you have like a transition again. All right. I'm also gonna add a little bit of that blue, of the matte blue, onto your upper lid, just to the outer corner to make it work, make it flow into each other. And of course she will also have an eyeliner, so don't worry too much about that part. Pues esa ya es una fantasía total la que estamos viendo en el ojo, verdaderamente es para un look en desde el punto de vista, ah, vamos a tomar una foto directa ahí, porque verdaderamente está, bueno, creo que Mika aquí ha puesto, pues no dudo que mínimo alrededor de 7, 8 colores diferentes entre sus variantes de tonalidad, lo cual lo vuelve verdaderamente un look impresionante y Fíjense bien cómo, vean qué tanto ha ensuciado, prácticamente nada, nada se ha ensuciado de aquí. La técnica que está usando desde el punto de vista que, a que entra con la brocha un poquito más gruesa, la que hablamos que era como parecida a la de polvo, y entra a mezclar, es completamente muchísimo más segura que la técnica que de repente es cargar el pincel, lengua de gato y vas directo, es más riesgosa, sin embargo, esto que es uno de los temores de la mayor parte de los maquillistas, el empezar a dejar exceso de, de la sombra, del polvo, de lo que cae, es algo de lo que la mayoría teme. Yo recuerdo que las primeras veces que lo hice también decía, híjole, que no se me caiga ahí la sombra, porque qué voy a hacer después. Pues aquí estamos viendo cómo precisamente ya el diseño, ya el uso de los pinceles correctos, que es también importantísimo, pues da otro look, da otra seguridad y se trabaja mucho mejor. Okay, so now I just added a liner with cream liner and black. Mm -hmm. And I just used a tiny little brush. You can also use the body paint brushes from Cryolan, which are the blue ones. Where do I have them? Here. Uh -huh. Because these will they're have around. a very nice mm -hmm. tip as well, because they're meant for body paint, for creating nice lines. Uh -huh. But the way I do it is... This is a flat uh, brush, It's slightly no? flat, right? So Let's see. I bueno, just... comenta que puede usar tanto en este como está usando ella, es el flat, ¿sí? es el plano, es el plano muy fino, pero obviamente también puedes usar ahí directamente el pincel redondo como el que nos mostró hace un momento y tenemos diferentes, desde muy finos hasta este que mostró, que si no me equivoco debe ser como el número 3 o 4. So, the outer part, the wing, Ajá. I always do with the eye open, because you cannot see where the crease will be when the eye is closed. Okay. So what I do is I let my model open her eyes, look straight ahead, and then I'm gonna stand in front of her and draw in a guideline. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. Just make sure that your guideline is a little shorter than what you plan of course. your liner to be later on. Okay, okay. Bien. So, for her. <laughs> I'm following her natural waterline because mm -hmm. this will give her a nice wing. Está siguiendo ahí la línea natural del ojo. Just drag it out. And then I look at it from the front. Uh -huh. And then with her eyes closed, I can connect and fill in the gaps and make it smooth. Excellent. You a will ver, do the same on the other eye. Like Ahí está el trabajo, vean como solamente hizo una parte y como dice ya ya ahorita que esté cerrado el ojo puedo continuar, pero prefiere hacerlo con el ojo abierto. Okay, so close your eyes. And now I can stretch a little bit. The shape is pretty much already set, so I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about this. It's just about filling the gaps and making it a little bit more even. And it helps to go from the outside to the inside, because okay. if you go the other way, you will drag the skin. Of course. 
Sí, ahí, ahí es el conocimiento desde el punto de vista de cómo se maneja la piel. Al hacerlo y al sostener un poco ahí, si tú haces el trazo de afuera hacia adentro, no estás moviendo la piel, no la estás arrastrando. Si lo haces al revés, se hacen pliegues y se nota y cuesta mucho trabajo. Uh -huh. I will also give her a point at the inner corner. Okay. This is the most difficult thing to get even. Claro. But since I only do one eye. Está haciendo todo. ¿eh? <laughs> sí, le dimos chance, le dimos chance. Muy no bien. problem there. <laughs> okay. For the inner corner, you want the eye to be open as well. And I'm just gonna put my brush right into that inner corner. Mm -hmm. Just flick it out. Okay. Entonces, del puntito hacia afuera, nada más un jaloncito. Eso es. Pick it up. Sometimes you can create very long points, sometimes uh -huh. very short ones, depends on your eye shape, your face shape. And I connect it to the waterline. Pick up. Because this way, you pretty much will be even on both eyes, because this will be your guideline. Sí, este es uno de los puntos más eh, especiales que se tienen que considerar porque como lo mencioné ya hace un momento, hacerlo de los dos lados parejito cuesta trabajo, entonces es un trabajo de detalle, pero pues ahorita se está dando la gran vida porque solamente trabaja en uno, pero estoy seguro que lo haría de maravilla. I'm also taking a little bit of the black, but on a softer brush. Ajá. Uh -huh. just brushing it along the outer corner, connecting it for more di uh, dimension. Exactly. You could also do this with eyeshadow. Of course. But in this case, I already have the black here. It is already a cream based, you know, sí. part, so. Aquí lo importante es usar el producto que a ti más te quede cómodo. Obviamente, pues ya teniendo ahí el delineador y además este delineador en cuanto seca es extraordinario porque es sumamente resistente. Entonces, mil veces mejor usarlo. Yeah, nice. Very, very nice. Just adding a little bit more eyeshadow here to connect it. Sometimes you only see it after you've done, you finished something and then you just add. Like this. And then we can add lashes, we can do the eyebrow. So for me, this eye look is, at this point, could be finished. You could also add glitter, stuff like that. I will add some fun elements at the end, don't worry. But let's continue with lashes. Excellent. Bueno, pues aquí ya podemos, incluso podría darse por terminado, todavía comenta que puede hacer muchas más cosas. Es obviamente poner las... Eh, Pestañas, un look de este tipo sin pestañas postizas sería imposible, eh, quedaría el ojo completamente desmarcado porque eh, después de todo ese color, de toda esa fantasía, el no poner en las eh, pestañas postizas, pues se come el ojo. Ahorita vas a ver cómo automáticamente con el uso de la pestaña, wow, el look ya se vuelve sumamente impresionante. So just a light coat of mascara. And with the cream liners, of course, you can also create colorful lashes. Of course. Because this again turns waterproof, turns mm -hmm. smudge proof. So you could just brush it on the lashes and you will have another thing of interest. Okay. Ahora sí que lo que vemos propiamente es diversión del maquillista. El maquillista se tiene que divertir también en hacer el trabajo, no es simplemente hacerlo, sino es disfrutarlo y esa es la manera. Y entre más conozcas tus productos, más lo puedes disfrutar. Por ejemplo, I could just add a little bit of yellow to the center to mirror uh -huh. the upper part. Right. Just brush it in. You need a lot of product on your brush. You just wiggle it on. Y es una fantasía adicional en donde está pintando ahí directamente For example, la 
este, pestaña inferior para que mache un poco con el color que tenemos arriba. Or in this case, I think I like the blue better. Uh -huh. You don't have to remove the yellow, just let it dry a little bit, add another layer. This will also create thickness to the lashes, so... It's a very nice product to play around with. It's very versatile. Lashes, waterline, of course liner, eyeshadow base, cream eyeshadow, brow, anything, pretty much. Que quisiste cambiar el color, lo puede hacer perfectamente, no hay necesidad de pensar en quitarlo. Encima de ese puso el azul y como comenta, incrementa la intensidad de la pestaña inferior, lo cual es perfecto porque obviamente al meter la pestaña de arriba, la de abajo tiene que estar marcada también. Okay, so for her eyebrows, I'm not gonna do too much to them since she has very beautiful natural yes. eyebrows anyway. Just gonna fill in the little gaps. I'm just con detalles ahí porque realmente tiene muy buena eh, forma de ceja, rellenando ahí los pequeños detallitos nada más. Remember, if your eyebrows are a little bit wonky or not that perfect or sparse, uh -huh. don't forget to shape them as well, because a heavy eye makeup look will only be framed by a nice eyebrow, otherwise it will look weird, so don't forget your eyebrows. Sí, sí, es un tip verdaderamente importante porque de esta manera en lo que está enmarcando el ojo en realidad es el, la ceja. Entonces está ahí rellenando, está haciendo detalles. Right, I think in that case it's enough. Uh -huh. Lo Let's permite, ask. un ojo tan maquillado permite una ceja sumamente marcada. So, we can add a little shimmery highlight just here on the brow bone. Only for the light. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't forget, Increase if you have a hooded eye, just keep it close to the eyebrow, otherwise the hooded eye will... Of course. ...plop. So, just a little highlight here. Again, living color. Put the color here, make the eye pop, and now let's add some lashes. Viene la colocación de las pestañas. So Mika we're gonna escogió add estas maravillosas ones. pestañas. <laughs> no. Since we are having a crazy look, I can add crazy lashes. Uh -huh. Open. To see what it will look like. Sometimes it helps to bend the lashes first, mm -hmm. especially if you have crazy ones like this. And always check first if the lashes actually work with your makeup. Okay. So I'm gonna just put them here without gluing them on. Open. And I think in this case, this part here will cover too much of my uh -huh. crease. So I'm taking the other lashes. which is just a nice full set. And here also a quick tip. If you want to transform your lashes and make them more natural, more wispy, you can have your mascara. Excuse me. Just brush the color through. So you create a little bit more texture, a little bit more interest. Because sometimes lashes are very, you know, flat, flat and cut, very mm -hmm. precise. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, you get a little bit extra volume and extra shape. Okay. Deep important. Let them dry first. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you will oh, look of messy. And I'm gonna use, if I can find it, my lash glue. Here it is. So I'm gonna use Dior. And the thing about lashes is sometimes people struggle a lot with putting lashes on. Mm -hmm. The trick is to let your lash glue dry down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Don't immediately place it on of the course. eye, otherwise the glue needs a little air to dry. If you just place it on, the glue cannot have air and it won't dry at all. So it will just move, it will get messy, it can ruin your makeup. So 
Yes. Give the glue a little time to dry before you put sí, it on. Sí, sí, el tiempo del secado del producto es importantísimo en el caso de las pestañas. Yo de hecho siempre me pongo la pestaña en la, el, el pegamento en la mano para que incluso el calor de mi propia mano dé ya un secado previo al pegamento. So first I test if the length is um, the right length for the eye. Okay. For her I don't have to cut. Mm -hmm. If you have to cut it, cut it from the outside because the inner ones are a little shorter and uh -huh. you want that transition. So. so, I take my lash glue. I just put a little bit on the lash band. You don't need much. Just make sure it's even and you have the corners covered because this is the first thing that lifts. Like that. And then wait. Okay. En un momento regresamos, vamos a darle tiempo de secado. Bueno, aquí en lo que secó, Yamika retiró el polvo con el pincel abanico y ahí viene el momento de la verdad pegando la pestaña. Ok, so don't let your client or yourself don't close your eye completely, uh -huh. because if the glue is still a little too wet, it can travel Stick. through your lashes and fit your eyes shut. <laughs> Then you will have the beard. In a... Of course, yes, yes, es bien importante. Pa suele suceder que se pegan. So what I do is let her look down. Exactly. This will stretch the eye. You will have access, and you will not glue the eye shut. So I place the lash in the center, and since this is already dry a little bit and tacky, I now have both hands free, mm -hmm. and I can just no put one side, push it down, take the other side, push it down. So I have more time to adjust the lashes, glue them in place. If you're not comfortable with tweezers, you can use your fingers. And I like to squeeze the natural lashes and the false lashes together. With my fingers or tweezers, depending mm -hmm. on what you prefer. And also bend them up a little bit. Like that. And open your eyes. Ta-da! Excellent. Sí, una de las cosas que a veces pasa es que le queremos tener mucho respeto a las pestañas. Me refiero a las pestañas postizas. Yo hago algo extremadamente similar y las muevo y les doy. No les tengo consideración. No le tengas consideración a las pestañas. Si eres nueva poniéndote pestañas, tú úsalas, ponles, no te preocupes. All right, so we can add glitter, we can add rhinestones, anything. We should also add blush, because mm -hmm. now this face looks very flat because exactly. we have a lot of color here. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of blush. I'm using my Glamour Glows, pretty much all of the colors. Y usando de nuevo la brocha llamada de fibra óptica. And I, again, I look at the mirror to see if it blends nicely. And I just add some warmth. What you can also do, if you realize that it doesn't work, or your eyeshadow suddenly looks flat, take your blush color on a fluffy brush and run it through the crease. And suddenly, it all comes together. It works. Of course. Para que se vea unidad. Hey. All right. So I'm gonna add one little creative detail. Okay. Quiere añadir todavía un detalle más loco. In this case will be okay, great. the metallic microflakes. Perfect. So with these you want a base, you want something on your skin uh -huh. to protect you because this is real metal. And some okay. people are a little sensitive, so but to have like a foundation on is enough. Okay. So just have something on your skin. You can glue them down with multi-gel, for example. Okay. Or with lash glue. Okay. Sometimes it's a little easier to use lash glue uh -huh. because um, you can also, you know, put it around the eye with the multi gel since this is water-based. Sometimes it floats a little, or it can mess up your eyeshadow a tiny bit. Okay. So be okay. Bien, nos dio las diferentes opciones en cuanto al pegado. Yo también, en lo personal, prefiero siempre pegarlo con el, pegame el mismo pegamento de pestañas. Es más seguro. Y bueno, un tip importante que siempre es bueno conocer 
ese material del que va a pegar es completamente metálico, alguna persona podría ser de repente ahí un poquito alérgica, pero ya al tener toda la base y todo esto ya no va a ir directo a la piel, por lo tanto nos olvidamos de ese tipo de problemas. Y obviamente aquí lo que también estamos manejando es un poquito de secado, aunque no creamos ya estar en la piel, el pegamento seca mucho más rápido y entonces puede aplicar. So I have the lash glue on. Be careful with air conditioning because uh -huh. this will just okay. flow away. So keep the lid on if you have air conditioning on. <laughs> Or the window open, little okay. wind. Okay. Don't sneeze on it. Es extremadamente volátil, así hay que así. Oops, you see? Que, <risa> Hay que tener cuidado porque eh, cualquier brisa, eh, el estornudo sobre el frasco y ya lo hiciste volar tremendamente. Then you can just place it where you like. Excelente. All right. Look Done. complete. Perfect. Tada. Bien, pues este es un maquillaje más que está haciendo Mika. Nos falta el otro ojito. Ya va a ser algo muy light, pero lo vamos a ver el siguiente video. Recuerda, aquí abajo está el link para que entres a ver los productos y de hecho también está toda la explicación en el sentido de qué productos usó Mika para que puedas ordenarlos en línea o bien directamente venir aquí a Arti City, tu sueño hecho realidad, donde recuerda que si el maquillaje es tu pasión, Arti City es la solución. Nos vemos en el siguiente video. Maquillaje como en Hollywood que es la fuente de la juventud, como estrella tú serás bellísima y sensual, Artis City. 3547640. Llámanos ya.